Thanks for joining us at Ride On Replicas, where we're proud to bring you the best scale model kit reviews on the planet. This review is brought to you in part by Rogers Hobby Center in Saginaw, Michigan, where the fun begins. This review covers the Schwinn Stingray Classic Crate Kit. It's a 1 8 scale kit from MPC number 914. Now Schwinn started producing the crates in 1968. And they came out with the orange crate, apple crate, and the lemon peeler. And then they added others up through 1973. Now the bikes had big and littles just like the dragsters of the day. And they came with strut suspension for the rear banana seat, a coil spring front suspension, and front aluminum drum brakes with rear disc brakes in the, in the back, and a five-speed stick shift. And that rounded out the outstanding standard equipment. In its day, these bikes were the bomb and the envy of every child of the time. Now, the only change for this kit was the re-release in uh, 2019. It looks like it was first released in 1972. Um, but all they did was change the box this year and reproduce it for us to enjoy. Now, uh, the there's 57 pieces and they come in, in clear red uh, with vinyl tires and some chrome plated parts one yellow sprue and a vinyl sprue there with a great looking decal sheet when you're done uh, it's about seven inches long three and a half inches wide and six inches tall the layout of the kit and as you can see there's a few sprues as we mentioned and uh, of course the yellow pieces are the main frame but um, we're going to be using super glue for most of the construction. And you should remember to um, remove any of uh, the chrome plating uh, or paint if you paint the model to get a good bond when you glue the parts together. And please follow any of the safety and use guidelines from the manufacturers of any of the products that you see or hear used in the review. Here are those decals we mentioned. And the color and register are great. Uh, but you may find it expedient to use some of the uh, setting solutions on the market to help them nestle around curves. Construction starts with the front tire. So remove the, um, the sprue from the center of the front tire with a hobby knife. And then take these parts, uh, including two that are numbered 129 on the sprue. And we'll, we'll use those to begin construction. Uh, remove uh, the sprue gates carefully and you may need to touch that up. Um, now glue the drum halves together and then sandwich them between the rim halves 120 and 121. And be sure to align the, align the halves so that the spokes are evenly spaced. Glue the chrome parts with some super glue and remove the plating once again. Now stretch the tire over the rim and I noticed that the plating kind of scuffs easily so you, you may want to actually spray the chrome trees with a little clear gloss or pledge uh, floor gloss first. The rear tire has essentially the same method of construction except that it has a disc brake. Um, so glue the brake disc to the side of the rim without the gear backing plate and stretch the tire over the rim. Here is what your assembled wheels will look like. And for realism, you can press and roll the traction area of the tire on some fine sandpaper on a flat surface to give it the scuffed up look. On my kit, there was a blemish on the sidewall of the rear slick. So I'll just rotate that up so it's underneath the fender and not visible. We'll start the frame construction with these pieces. So remove uh, parts 1, 2, and 3, clean those up, and the chain and spring bracket part and there's some injector um, pin marks on the frame so sand those off and fill them uh, and then clean those up and then just glue the vertical frame tube halves together and the curved front frame tube to the frame halves now leave the uh, bottom frame tube on part two a little bit free so that you can slide the chain and sprocket uh, in, onto the frame after paint I placed a toothpick through the pedal hole uh, on the frame to hold it in place while I painted it. Uh, now we'll do a little more prep work before paint. And I took the uh, chain guard and masked off the top of it so that I could paint the side the frame color, which is going to be uh, Model Master's Dark Ghost Gray. And then I prepped the uh, hand grips 
and uh, I put them on uh, the, the core of the tire there uh, to hold them for painting. And I painted the, uh, the chain and the seat a gloss black. And al also, I'm going to give the parts uh, a coat of, uh, uh, you know, good primer. And that includes the frame that we built. And then we're going to, after that dries, uh, give it a nice uh, coat, clear even coat, I'm sorry, of the uh, dark uh, ghost gray. And then let that dry. And after that, um, I gave them a coat of pledge. Um, and then I painted again the uh, chain a gloss black and placed the frame through the chain and centered the sprocket on the toothpick. Uh, and I'll give the, uh, I'll glue the chain and the sprockets into place after setting the rear axle uh, for proper alignment. These next few steps will go quickly. Now place the front of the rear fender on the frame and rotate the fender brace until it sets in between the marks under the fender and glue everything in place with some super glue. I hand painted the rubber parts and the pedals uh, a rubber black along with the valve stems on the rims. Then I glued the right side crank part, uh, that's number 136, to the sprocket and aligned the left side crank to match the angle of the right and glued it into place. Now I glued the chain guard to the frame with the guard pin into the frame hole and resting on the rear of the guard on the frame. We'll need to do a little detailing uh, with some decals now prior to the next assembly and put decal number one on the steering tube on the front of the frame. Uh, numbers eight go on the uh, pedals as reflectors and the gray ghost decal number 10 goes on the chain guard and I placed uh, white decal number 11 on the seat with the pleating intact instead of sanding the seat smooth before painting and adding the decal. I used some of that uh, solvent uh, from Microscale uh, to s let the decals uh, soften and dry into place. Then I sealed them with some of the Pledge Floor Gloss uh, liquid. Locate these parts from the kit and we'll use the front suspension spring and the handlebar tube uh, along with the steering arm, part number 126, and place 113 through the steering tube on the frame and carefully align and glue the steering arm to 113 only. Uh, don't get glue on the frame if you want the steering to function. Next we'll use these front suspension pieces, the forks and the front tire assembly to assemble that and make sure that the forks are aligned evenly with each other and, and they're symmetrical. And then just put some glue on the axle pin area and the fork parts so that the front tire will still continue to turn. Next we'll use these pieces, the spring shackles 116, the front fenders 112, the front brake actuator number 127, the shifter parts are 107, 108, and there are two of the 107s. Place the spring shackle on the spring and let it dry. Then put the forks on the steering arm and pivot the forks to line up with the shackle and glue it into place and let that dry thoroughly. Next we'll locate the fender on the fender bracket and the pin below the steering arm. We'll glue those into place and let them dry. After that place the shifter 108 without some glue on the pin on the shifter housing. And then glue the shifter housing halves to the frame with no glue on the shifter. Now glue the brake actuator to the hub and, de and decal the shifter housing with the 5 speed decal number 4. Fill the injector mark on the shift knob and paint that black. In step 10 there's two options for the seat. You can use the Stingray seat with the shock absorbing struts or the custom high rise sissy bar with the high back banana seat. I went with the Stingray seat part number 6 and the struts, parts 102. Um, then place the struts on the pins on the rear fender brace and glue the seat to the frame pin and rotate the struts to attach to the seat. Next, glue the struts to the fender brace and the seat. Well, as you can see, things are coming together rapidly now. Grab the two handlebar halves, both labeled part 100, and place them through the handlebar tube, gluing them together so that they are parallel to each other and look symmetrical on, on every angle. 
Now I decided to place the remaining decals on their prospective parts and uh, decals 5 and 6 go on the shifter housing, number 2 goes on the speedometer face, number 9 on the vinyl bag, and decal number 3 goes on the mirror. 7 goes on the frame under the seat. I used some setting solution for them and let them dry thoroughly before placing them into position. Get out the handle grips and the brake levers, parts 101, and then glue the grips to the handlebars in the proper orientation and glue the brake levers to the handlebars using the alignment pins and holes. Now gather up the handlebar accessory pieces you see here, the horn, the uh, mirror, etc. and place the mirror bracket on the upper left handlebar and then glue the mirror to the bracket. Glue the lens into the headlight housing and glue that to the left side of the handlebar tube. Next, glue the two parts of the speedometer together and glue that to the right side of the handlebar tube. Now, glue the horn pieces together and place them halfway up on the right side handlebar. Let's work with these pieces for the bag and the reflector assembly. And then uh, the housing is number 128 and the derailleur is 105 and the vinyl bag there. Uh, now we're going to glue the reflector parts together and place them uh, to the brace under the back of the rear seat there. And glue the derailleur uh, to the axle bracket and the derailleur sprockets. Glue the um, two parts of the bag together and then place the black bag on the uh, rear struts just above the rear fender. And the buckles are chrome and you can detail those with a chrome pen. Next we'll work on some of the cabling and you'll need to use the uh, guide that is in the um, instructions to cut your tubing. Uh, so cut four pieces of tubing according to the instructions there. And the, the shortest one is the speedometer cable. And place one end on the pin on the back of the speedometer and the other on the right side of the front hub. Next size up the shift cable and place one end of that on the pin of the shift housing and the other on the derailleur pin. And now the front brake cable uh, gets placed uh, on one end and the, on the pin on the uh, right hand of the brake lever and the other pin on the front brake actuator on the left side of the front hub. The longest piece is for the rear brake cable, so place one end on the pin of the left hand brake lever and the other on the right hand of the uh, brake actuator there. And finally, glue the kickstand into place as well. Well, there you have it. This blast from the past looks great on your shelf. In 1 8 scale, it's plenty big enough to show off the details. Now there's just a very little flash and a few ejector pins that you'll have to fill and, and smooth over with some of your favorite modeling putty. But overall, uh, it went together well. And uh, despite some areas where the glue points aren't exactly um, prominent, they're easy to figure out. Overall, I'd say um, any, any modeler uh, that's uh, an intermediate type modeler could put this together and have a whole lot of fun with it. After all, um, this will take you right back to the 60s and early 70s. And if you were a kid back then, this is the one that you had your eye on and asked for for Christmas. But it was probably too expensive to get for just about everybody uh, that I knew. So I didn't get to see them except over by... Uh, you know, the suburbs where uh, some of the other kids had them, but they were just really awesome. Uh, and if I were you, I'd buy one and put it on my shelf. Well, we hope you like this premium step-by-step -step scale model kit review. And so that you don't miss any more, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can do that by clicking on the icon in the lower right hand of every review. And if you want to, you can see us on Facebook or at our website, right on Thanks.